Today, we're going to talk about one of the most controversial topics in agriculture, milk. Now, many of you at home might be scratching your heads wondering, what is so controversial about milk? Besides the fact that we as Canadians put our milk in bags, and I will never fully understand why we do that, Canada is the only industrialized country with a dairy supply management system. Established in 1972, Canada implemented a dairy supply management system which controls how much a dairy farmer can produce, sets the price of dairy, and imposes tariffs on imports, thereby protecting the Canadian dairy market. But at what cost? We, on occasion, hear of dairy farmers dumping milk simply to keep the quota. Is this happening? Is this wasteful? Or is it necessary to protect our dairy farmers? Consumers in Canada decry the higher price of dairy compared to our neighbors in the U.S., According to secondstreet.org, milk prices in Canada are about 30% higher than the U.S. So are Canadian consumers subsidizing dairy farmers in Canada? Is that fair? Does dairy supply management grant us better quality milk products? Or are we just Canadians just paying more for the same? And why shouldn't Canadians who want to purchase and consume raw milk be barred from doing so? Is dairy supply a sacred cow, pun intended, that no politician wants to touch? Well, later in the program, Michael Schmidt of Glen Colton Farms will join me to discuss his legal battle for raw milk with the government, as well as his concerns of government overreach. But now, to explain the benefits of dairy supply management is Professor Bruce Muirhead from the University of Waterloo. Dr. Muirhead, thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate your time. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Excellent. So could you please, uh, for our viewers, walk us through the dairy supply management system Canada has? Well, it was set up in 1966 in response to a whole series of problems that, that um, confronted dairy in the 1950s and the early 1960s, primarily overproduction, which is a huge waste of resources, um, feed, electricity, energy, labor, all of those things entered into the equation. Eventually, as well, dairy farmers in those days were subsidized directly by the government with a payment. Um, if dairy prices, for whatever reason, didn't meet a certain minimum, didn't reach a certain minimum, the result of that is government eventually struck a royal commission, both in the province of Ontario and federally, and they determined that probably the best way to deal with this chronic problem of oversupply, and there is a chronic problem of oversupply that remains to this day with countries that don't supply manage. Government came up with this idea in 1966, the federal government, that what we need is some sort of mechanism to prevent farmers from simply investing huge amounts of money into producing milk that nobody can use. It has to be dumped. And we see that in the United States today. I know you mentioned um, in your intro, the, the case of the US. It is in some ways unfortunate, that our neighbor is the United States. They do produce cheaper milk, but I would say that their milk um, is not necessarily significantly cheaper than what we produce in Canada. They also farm with massive subsidies. In fact, the latest farm bill, the, the one, the proposed farm bill that will be implemented next year in the United States and last for a five-year period, they're talking now about $1.5 trillion in subsidies to agriculture over the next 10 years. That's an enormous amount of money that the consumer pays through taxes. So whether you pay through taxes maybe or slightly higher prices in the supermarket, um, it seems to me not really to matter all that much. Well, and, and that was gonna be my comment to you that so it sounds like you're gonna be paying regardless, whether it's at the right. checkout in the grocery store aisle or through your taxes for these direct subsidies. Uh, so, and again, that leads me to my next question. We only have about 45 seconds before commercial. So in the countries where they don't have supply management, there are direct benefits being paid to the dairy farmers? Oh yes, in the European Union, for example, um, they have the single farm payment. It goes out to all farmers, but basically the biggest farmers benefit the most. It's a direct subsidy payment that takes about 40% of the entire European Union budget. It's billions of euros that goes to agriculture every single year. And the single farm payment means the bigger you are, the more money you get. The queen, you know, the late queen, for example, was a subsidy millionaire. She got paid so much money through the European Union um, through subsidy that it was, I mean, it's ridiculous. The small farmers, the ones that populate the back concessions in Canada, 
They get very, very, very little money wow. out of the subsidy regime.